Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. It is day 607 and 1 John 4 is our text for today. Let's pray and ask the Lord's help as we begin. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word and for this time. We are your people by your grace. We are called to follow Jesus Christ. We are called to be salt and light to a world that needs the influence of the gospel. We're called to be worshipers of the one true God and children of God who imitate our Heavenly Father. We need you. We need your Holy Spirit. We need your your word. We need your your work in our lives. So please speak to us. Please work on us. Please shape us to be more like Jesus, our Savior. It's in his name we pray. Amen. First John chapter 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world. Therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his Spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar, for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. That is 1 John chapter 4. So we have two big headings here. One is about discernment and the other is about love. And sometimes in the eyes of the world, these two things don't go together. If you're going to be discerning and you're going to say that this is the truth and this is error and these are the voices we should listen to and these are the voices we should not listen to, our culture says that that's not love. But the Bible says that discernment and love go hand in hand. You must know the truth. You must be rooted in the truth as revealed by God in his son Jesus Christ and then you are able to walk in love but you can't know the truth and then refuse to walk in love one is the root and one is the fruit one is the engine and the other is 
the going of the vehicle, right? And so if you know the truth, you know, you just have deep roots, but no fruit if there's no love. Or you have an engine that you're running, but you're not putting it into gear and going down the road. That's kind of some maybe weakish analogies, but I think that's what we're supposed to see here is that discernment of the truth, commitment to the truth and love go together. As Paul would put it, we're speaking the truth in love. We grow up into him who is the head. That's what Paul says in Ephesians 4. So first, this issue of truth. And the reality is that there's a lot of lying in the world, right? Satan is the father of lies. He's a liar from the beginning and the father of lies. And he has filled this world as the God of this age with all sorts of lies. And many of the lies that are in the world are distortions of Christianity. They sort of build on the Christian uh, story, and they sort of build on the name of Jesus Christ, but then they twist it. In John's day, the major twisting that was coming was from a group sometimes known as the Docetists or early Docetists. Dokeo means to seem or to appear. And the idea that they had was that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Word of God, appeared in human form. That he seemed to be in the form of a man. But he wasn't actually human flesh and blood. This was part of a Greek philosophy system that said the body and the flesh and the physical world and matter are temporary and evil but spirit, transcendence, those things are eternal and good, which is not a Christian worldview. A Christian worldview does not disparage the body or the physical creation. These things are made by God and they were created to be very good. Sin infects and affects body and soul. So the truth is that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Now this particular false teaching that John is arguing against. They didn't deny the divinity of Christ or the deity of Christ. They didn't deny that Jesus Christ was God, the Son of God, God the Son, the Word of God. What they denied was that he was made flesh. On the other side of things, however, there are people who do not deny the humanity of Jesus, that he was made flesh, but they deny his divinity or his deity. They deny that he was God the Son or is God the Son made flesh. You have to have both of these. You have to have the God-man, the Word made flesh, the Son of God become the human being, Jesus of Nazareth. You have to have both of these. You cannot have just one without the other because Christ is the mediator and the reconciler. He is the redeemer and the representative. He's the prophet, priest, and high king of our confession. He has to be fully man, but also fully God. And so if there's variations on that, like, for example, Mormonism or Jehovah's Witness or, you know, even uh, Islam that accepts Jesus as a great prophet, but doesn't accept him as, you know, the the son of God, it would say actually that he's the word made flesh and that he was born of a virgin, but wouldn't believe that he is the son of God and that he is God in the flesh. They would say that that's disgusting and abhorrent. So all of those are are really pseudo-Christian cults. They're, they're, they're false prophets, and they are bad spirits, and we should not listen to them. We should listen only to those who confess who Jesus Christ truly is. But we shouldn't just listen to those who say who Jesus Christ is. We shouldn't just know the truth. We should live the truth. And if we're going to live the truth, that means we're going to love one another because the truth of what Jesus came to do is to reconcile us to God the Father and make us brothers and sisters in the family of God. So we are reconciled to God the Father and we are made brothers and sisters in the family of God, then we must love one another. And it's so important. His love is perfected in us. He abides in us. We truly abide in him if we show forth the fruit of this love. It is impossible. It is an inherent contradiction. It is a denial of our faith to say, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, but I don't want to be part of his church. Or I love Jesus, but I can't stand Christians. And there are people who go around saying both of those things. 
quite openly, quite bluntly, quite boldly. They say, oh, I'm a follower of Jesus. I love Jesus, but I don't want to join his church. I don't want to join the church, that human religious institution. Or they'll say, Jesus I love. It's Christians I can't stand. Well, 1 John 4, among other places, would say to us, that's a contradiction. You can't do that. You have to receive the love of God manifested into the world, and that is God sending his Son into the world that we might live through him, and that we, having been cleansed of our sin, verse 10, ought to love one another, verse 11. We have to love one another if God abides in us and we in him. When Jesus came into the world, he said he came to build his church. He said he came to be the good shepherd of the sheep and that his sheep would know his voice and there would be one flock and one shepherd. So we need to confess the truth, verse 15, whoever, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and him and God. We need to confess the truth but then we also need to live in love, verse 16. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God and God in him. The truth in love, loving Jesus, loving one another. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, verse 20, he's a liar. He who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. This couldn't be any clearer. The, the word of God could not be any clearer. And so we, we don't live this way. We need to repent. We need to ask God for mercy. And we need to ask him to give us a heart that would love him and that would love his people. Be as committed to the church as Jesus Christ was. And he was committed enough to lay down his life for his bride. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your truth. Thank you for your son who is the truth. He is the very truth of God made human flesh. And we are saved and reconciled to you only through him and the propitiation he offered. But as you've reconciled us to yourself through Christ, you've also reconciled us to one another through Christ. You, as you call us to love Jesus because he's first loved us, so you've also called us to love one another because Jesus has loved all of us and has made us all one family. So help us to walk in love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's 1 John chapter 4, and we're going to be jumping back to 2 Chronicles tomorrow, picking up with chapter 30. Hope you can join me for that. As always, I really do hope you have a blessed day in the Lord.